Hello YouTube and welcome back to the channel. Today I just wanted to shoot a quick video on my Drosera Ordinensis by Derbensis. Just for the fun of it. Um, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. I believe I am, but you never know. Sometimes I goof up. But uh, yeah, I said last video that I was going to do a care guide about this. If anyone expressed any interest and no one expressed any interest because I'm pretty sure like only 10 people watched my last video. Probably the same case with this video. But it'll be fun to make anyway. I'm just kind of enjoying doing this. But anyway, here we go. Um, it has, it's just a really robust plant. Um, as far as things in the complex, if you're going to try to do like a woolly sundew or a petalorus or petalorus complex, or if you choose to pronounce it, I definitely recommend starting out with a hybrid or Drosera petalorus or petalorus self. Like just the the first plant that was discovered in Northern Australia was Drosera petalorus. And they're supposed to be very easy. I've also heard Drosera paradoxa is good, but um. I don't have any experience with anything besides this plant, although I am getting more, so stay tuned for that. I'm hoping to get some interesting ones that are a little bit more like desirable species than this. I mean, this is desire; they're all desirable, but more sought after, I guess. But um, this plant is technically it's supposed to be in winter um, dormancy, if you will. They go into a dry period in the winter time in Australia. Um, I guess winter time uh, seasonal changes because it's. Winter time here now, it's summertime there now, so I don't know. Anyway, yeah, they have a, a dry period in the winter time where it doesn't really rain much and it still stays very hot, but they do go like dormant and they turn into a little bud sort of thing. And as long as you keep it really warm and not drying out, keep it wet, it shouldn't do that for you. I've heard some species have the tendency to do that, but I've, if from my experience, this plant doesn't really need that or, um, want to do that. It's just doing its own thing. Uh, it's doing really well. But um, anyway, yeah, The if you keep it in lower light, the traps are kind of more of a yellowy orange, and in this highlight, they're uh, that kind of reddish orange, kind of more leaning toward red. And uh, the plant itself kind of has like a silvery sheen to it. Uh, my camera has like a weird thing, kind of. It doesn't look quite like what it looks like in real life, but trust me, the um, the traps are very red and the rest of the leaves are very um kind of silvery white. It's very cool, especially like kind of uh in very high light, it looks very interesting. But they're like that because in Australia it gets like, you know, wicked hot and uh, they gotta they've have to not burn to a crisp, so those small white hairs are somewhat reflective and it kinda of helps keep some of the heat off of the plant. But speaking of heat, um these guys like it really hot. I'd recommend, I know people do it very differently. Some people grow them like in a furnace and some people grow them at like room temperature and some people have success with both, but I think it really just depends on your climate and your experience level. But me personally, I like to keep mine between 89 and 95 in the daytime. Um, my preferred range is 90. I, I like keeping mine at 92 to 93 in the daytime and letting it get down to like between 79 and 83 at night to give it a little bit of a temperature drop still keep it warm so kind of like ultra lowland conditions uh i've had this plant get down to 68 degrees without any ill effects although i would not recommend that and i've gotten this plant up to about 105 before and um although i would not recommend that i think getting it cold is worse for it than getting it hot because i kept it at 95 for a few days um consecutively and it literally is the same as it is now. It didn't, it didn't set back its growth. It didn't, you know, dry it out or anything. Well, the water evaporated faster, but did fine. Um, yeah, so it's a, it's a pretty tough plant, especially the hybrids in this uh, subgenus are uh, pretty pretty tough. Um, size comparison, although you've probably already seen it, there's a, a nickel. And there's the plant. Uh, they do. They are a little bit more flushed out in the summertime. Oh, by the way, in case I didn't mention this, this is from Curious Plant. This is an in-house hybrid created by them. They're based in Ohio, I believe, but I would highly recommend them. Their plants are pretty reasonable. I got this uh, for 35 bucks plus shipping, so like 45 bucks more like it. But um, I mean, they're great people. Uh, they'll answer any of your dumb questions you have about the plant. <laughs> like I definitely asked them a lot, and just to see. Because I, I I really don't have experience with this subgenus, but um, yeah, I mean they have a lot of other stuff in the subgenus as well. Uh, a lot of other 
stuff in the subgenus in the Petalaurus or Petalaurus complex. I'm pretty sure I talked about that. Okay, whatever. But anyway, over to my setup. This is my setup. The lights aren't on it right now. I keep the lights right up above here. Um, like right really close to the plant, just a few inches away from the plant. And uh, I have water in the bottom to keep the humidity up. I think it probably stays around 90 to 99% humidity. It's like very humid. Um, I have a little thermometer. I don't really remember what it is. Just keep the accurate temperature readings. Saran wrap over the top. Um, I don't use like glass or plexiglass over the top because I think it actually might heat it up a little bit too efficiently. And saran wrap keeps humidity and keeps heat in to an extent but doesn't let it get super duper hot. And I have a 10 gallon fish tank heater for tropical fish in a cup of water, which just keeps it really hot. I usually turn that on at night and I also turn it on in the daytime, but I don't leave it on all day because it'll get crazy hot. And then my um, lights, even though they're LED lights, still get it pretty hot because it's a small tank and it heats up pretty fast. But, um, anyway, back to the plant. Let's go back over here. All right, there we go. Um, I keep it, I just, I, <laughs> This might be a little bit too much water in the cup, but I just keep it like, it's basically just like a clear solo cup. And um, I just fill it basically all the way up to the top with water. And then I let it evaporate. And then I fill it up again. Just never let the cup dry out or else you could be in trouble because it might decide to kind of go uh, dormant, if you will. Not really dormant. Um, in a, I guess it's kind of dormancy. Anyway, they'll do that. You don't want that because then you have to dry them out and kind of wait them out. And that's no fun. I'd rather it be an active growth. But um, yeah, other than that, for feeding, um, here's a trap I just fed. Hold on. No, that's not going to do it, is it? There's a trap I just fed. There we go. And there's another trap. I'm just showing you the close ups now. It's not even, I'm like off track. But anyway, um, I usually, for these guys, use. Oh, this is so terrible. Uh, lights bad fresh water fish food um i don't even really i know some people actually like wet the fish food to make it kind of more suitable and easier for the traps to absorb but for this plant i just use the dried fish flakes same thing i feed my fish or some of my fish but um it works pretty well for these i definitely um some sundews don't need that much food or could it not be like that great for them like a this one right here i don't feed this one that often on oh, my drosera slacky eye you know same thing with the capensis. I mean, although they could use it. But these guys, um, I think, just kind of the region they're from in Australia. I mean, they take whatever they can get in the growing season. So I think these, over many other plants, really appreciate some extra food. I'm not talking like load them up, but I mean like, you know, just uh, apply um, a little bit of fish food on one of the traps once, you have, once every like two or three weeks, or maybe even once every other week. Just keeps them in nice, robust growth. Um, I put a little piece of food on one of the traps of each kind of growth point because there's three on this plant every like two weeks and it seems to keep it in great growth. But um, yeah, I mean, I definitely recommend this plant. It's, I know $45 seems like a lot for one sundew, but uh, as long as you can keep it alive, it'll stick around for quite a while. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the kind of little petal or sundew care guide uh, sort of thing. I don't know. This is just for one species. Don't take everything I say to heart because I'm not the most experienced with this genus, but I think what applies for this one applies for most of them. I've heard v mixed things for sure. But um, yeah, thank you for watching. Um, like if you liked this video and stay tuned because I am going to be at some point in the next month unboxing a shipment of a couple different species, not hybrids of these. Uh. But anyway, yeah. Um, thanks for watching. Have a good day.